You might die here because the challenges are very hard and people die in the challenges. It's been the history of this entire program. You only learn, and you need to take this in, you only learn by your experience. So what were the techniques? What did he have that was so useful? Well, why shouldn't you be able to be like this all the time? Why shouldn't, you, why shouldn't you be able to pull it together and hold yourself in that position and do that to, and in every age group? There is no limitation on what you can do, but how did I get this stuff, to the information, so that you could start to do this yourself and Vision can do it? How can I get you these techniques of 20 minutes a day? Well, so while I'm working in China, it was fun. I'm doing surgery, but I still didn't have what I wanted. Do you imagine what that's like after seven years and spending everything you've got and it's 160,000 miles and you still don't have what you wanted? I didn't know vision then. I didn't know anybody. I was just a guy, just like you are. You ever wake up in the morning and feel like you're all alone? Yeah, really? You're talking to yourself? I was just alone. I just still didn't know. But I was working in the hospital in China doing surgery and finally I saw this book in the library where this, this grandmaster is treating people with his finger from a distance. And I said, ah, this is what I want. He's able to give energy. This is the thing that I know really will help people. So I ran to the head of the hospital. I said, you gotta let me meet this guy. He went, impossible, impossible. He said, you are a Gui Lao. Do you know what Gui Lao is? Anybody here speak Mandarin? Yeah. Foreigner, worse than foreigner. You're a ghost. <laughs> in China in those days, you're considered not okay. We are okay. Remember, China was insular then. So we know everything. We don't want outside people. So you're called a foreign ghost, a white ghost, something bad. And so I said, well, yeah, but I'm doing all this good work here. He says, we know, yeah, and you don't take any payments. So you've got a lot of rapport with everybody, but you're not going to get to meet him. And plus, the Grand Grand Master lives at the to top of the mountain, and there's no way to meet him. And there, it's, it's some people, even back then, this is 25 years ago, have to pay $10,000. Can you imagine? Just for one visit. So... I persisted though, and finally I got to treat this great commissar from Beijing. I took out this tumor, and then his sec, his aide said to me afterwards, he said, uh, how'd he go? And I said, we got it out, he can, he's fine, he can, he'll be good able to go. He goes, you're lucky. And I went, I'm lucky, why? He said, this is China. If you had failed, you wouldn't be going home. And I went, okay. Now, remember I told you about crisis? So you turn the crisis into an opportunity. You got it? So although I was in crisis and had gotten through it, now how do I make it the opportunity? You gotta look for the opportunity all the time. Keep looking for it. So I said, I wanna go see this grandmaster, can I do it? And he went, he had the power. So he said, I'll check it out. So finally the, the big commissar said, okay, I'll get you the opportunity. I've wired up to him that you can do, it, but you have to get there on your own. You know, what do you mean get there on your own? I mean, I'm in a foreign country. I don't speak Mandarin that well. And what am I supposed to do? And so I got on some guys, it wasn't even a real motorcycle, it was like a motorbike. And so he motorbiked me halfway up this mountain and then I had to walk the rest and finally I made it to the temple. And I got there and was it the realization of my dream after seven years? Come on, are you ready? Is, or was it still more crisis? It's more crisis, right? I got there and everybody said, what are you doing here? I'm walking in with a baseball hat and you can see I'm rather tall. And back in those days, Chinese people were not tall. Their nutrition wasn't that great. They didn't have biohacking. And so most people were about here. And so I walked in and the Grand Master was tall, but everybody else was short. And they said, you, sh you shouldn't be here. And I still said, I spent my life trying to get here. I've already have total respect in the surgical suites back at UCLA and in the hospitals. I don't care. You can embarrass me all you want. Who cares if you get embarrassed if you're learning, right? So I didn't care they didn't like me. And they didn't. And I didn't say anything. You ever not been liked and you didn't say anything? So I just walked in, but still, I, sort of, it was, I was treated sort of like a stray dog. And, but I stayed there and I slept wherever I could sleep and I got food whenever I could. And finally, I got to watch him do things. And what I saw him do, would you like to hear some of the things he did? I saw him heal things from a distance where, you know, in the emergency room, I could sew you up. But he would go like this and you'd see the wound, just like in the movies, zip, just like in Doctor Strange and in, and when you see things like when he put his hands through the wall in uh, the Matrix movie, you know, I'll tell you about how that worked out, but I saw him treat people with cancer 
that, uh, and as a doctor, I'd done research. So I, I said, well, it, really, this guy's supposed to be on chemotherapy and everything. No, he can't do it. He's too sick. And then I saw him come back because I kept coming back uh, every few months to, to work with him and watch him because he said, finally, I could take notes and I could learn from him. But he was never friendly. He was never friendly. Neither was anybody else. His lieutenants, he was very competitive. And so um, I saw him fix a guy who had a shoulder that was broken in 14 places from uh, falling out of a building. And they said, you can't even lift a shoulder. And just by giving him the energy, I saw the bones over each time that he treated him finally go back into position. And then finally went back to work. He was able to lift heavy things. I saw people not only with cancers get healed. I saw people with uh, major, major emotional problems, you know, anxiety where, you know, they were just shaking like this and he would just go, And the person would calm down and they'd be completely relaxed and then they would stop and they would stay he would give them exercises like i'm going to give you exercises we've got them all, all this program for you that they could do at home and then they could they didn't have to take medication which was a big joy for me because i was tired of as you all finally are, you can imagine I'm 20 years ago doing, saying I'm tired of big pharma. I'm tired of people having to reach outside themselves. I'd like for them to do their own practices. And so we saw people who, who were so uh, not only emotionally sad, but also had trouble with their joints. And one guy came in with his leg was about this much shorter than the other leg. And so I said, this is impossible. There's no way you're gonna fix this. And doggone it, over time, even though he was a young adult, the leg grew and grew and grew until finally, I, and I had him jumping up and down, I got photos of him where the other leg was the same length. So, sounds great, right? So I wanna do this. Don't you wanna learn this? So, I, so one day he said to me, the Grand Master said, would you like to learn? And I said, absolutely, are you kidding me? My life joy. And he said, well, there's a couple provisos. One, you might die trying. And I went, what? What kind of introduction is this? How's that for hello, how are you? And uh, he said, you might die trying. And I said, well, no, really? He said, yeah, there's no malpractice here. There's no lawyers. You're on top of a mountain. There's not even guardrails anywhere. There's nothing to protect you. And every single thing you're going to learn is not in a book, because I'd already asked them about that. How many of you are book learners? And you read and read and read. How many self-help books have you read? How many do you buy every year? How many do you download from Audible? And still, you're stuck with yourself in the morning. How are we gonna put it together? I want you to be able to be able to turn yourself on and be totally like a Saturn rocket taking off. So he said, you might die here because the challenges are very hard and people die in the challenges. It's been the history of this entire program. You only learn, and you need to take this in, you only learn by your experience. So that was why the first slide was so important. You only learn, that's what Vishen is such, so eloquent in being able to talk about. He sort of represents that, okay, he went through all these thoughts and things and had an idea about what things could be, but then in his experience, he found out that, well, it just looks like you become more the world was the way you want it to be. More things happen. Did you ever feel like you had a lucky day and you woke up and everything was working? Believe it or not, that's accessible every day using these practices. So he said, you know, you might die doing this because of the challenges are very difficult. And number two, you might die um, because it's so dangerous and that, you, that it, 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 you, you may not even make it to the end. Most people don't. As you can see, nobody's made it to this level. It's, it's very few people. At that time, there was less than 10. Right now, there's nine people that have made it to mastery. I'm one of them, and I'm really appreciative of that. But I made it through all the challenges. So you want to know what the challenges were like? You think your life is rough? <laughs> so here I am at UCLA or in the hospitals working every day. And you know what's like in a hospital, just like in TV, a lot of respect. The nurses are like this. Everybody's like really helpful. And you're like a, a, a well-oiled machine. And then I'm over in China and what am I doing? The grandmaster gives you challenges. So he says, I want you to go out at 4.30 in the morning and I want you to sit out in the snow and I'm gonna come and cut and come by you in about an hour or two. And uh, you're gonna go out there just wearing your shorts and your job is to stay warm. It's like freezing cold. And it was like that mountain that I showed you. Uh, and I want you to see how big of a circle you can create by melting the snow. I mean, I'm a doctor, you know, what did melt the snow? Let's get a butane lighter. So I'm going to melt the snow. But what he did was he gave me all these practices to do. And I found that you could generate enough heat. You could generate enough uh, energy coming through to your body that is possible for you to melt all that snow. It was amazing. And then one time that I was there with him, then I slid all the way down the mountain and uh, I broke my hand. Okay. And so I took my hand to him and I said, um, my hand's broken and I'm a surgeon. And he said, what are you gonna do about it? 
And I went, okay, here we go. You might die again. And so he gave me the uh, exercises, and people have seen me do that since then when I have broken bones to treat, and I actually was able to treat it just like I'd seen him treat people until all the fingers and everything was you know, working perfectly again. Not only that, he sh- had me go out and once go to this island. You'll like this story. This is too freaky Friday. I've never told you this one. He had me go to this island that's near uh, the coast of China, and um, first place, I don't speak that good a Mandarin, so it's hand signals in my dictionary. Uh, and um, he says, you're going to this island and you're gonna go out into the forest. Forest, great, did I bring bug spray? No, so there was 10 trillion mosquitoes there. It's all, you know, just like Tarzan, all this terrible humidity and everything. And he says, what I want you to do is I want you to find this path, I'll give you the map, you find the path, and after you get to the path, I want you to get to this tree, this one tree overreaches this lake, and I want you to get up on that tree, but you have to be there exactly at this time. So I said, oh my gosh. So what I did is I got there very early in the morning and I finally found the path as I'm going up there, but the mosquitoes were just impossible. I mean, I was bitten everywhere. And finally, when I climbed up the tree and got on the branch, was some relief. I finally was overlooking this lake like this. So that, because he must have known about that. And he's all the way in another province, okay? Now, why does he want me to see what I'm about to see? Because he wants to show you that there's no, and of course they've recently discovered this, but I learned this 20 years ago, there's no distance between us. There's none. Now they finally found about entanglement that uh, molecules that roll together, or it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, that you can affect them on the other side of the globe. He wanted me to see that the energy and your intention not only can have your body work, but can help other people, people in your family, whatever. So I'm leaning over this uh, big branch over the water like this, itching like crazy, and then all of a sudden this big explosion from the water goes up like this, and the water goes up and forms like a dragon. And I went, and then of course after that I was like almost stoned, and then I just meditated on the thing, but he wanted me to realize that even though he's over there, he can help you over here. Even though you're here, you can help your body that's here. The energy and your distance between uh, you, as Einstein said, is time solid or is it movable movable is distance something we just make up or is it something that actually you can traverse many distances depending on what your speed is what your being space is okay so he had me learn that he had me it was so many different tests so many times that i got hurt uh but was able to heal it and then finally he said okay you can you've now passed you've succeeded you've made it through all the tests but you have to have a meeting with me and so the, grand, the first lieutenant and me sat down uh, in his chamber, and it's just, it's right out of the movies. He's sitting at the distance there with a cup of tea, holding it like this, but not drinking, which made me nervous. And so I'm sitting over here, and I knew how to do the genuflections and everything in old China. And I sat there, and, I, and he says, do you know why we decided to treat you and let you learn this discipline? And I don't know if you all ever have this moment during your life, but you're in front of somebody that you want to tell them the right answer. It's one of those Zen moments and you respect them and you can see that they've got magical abilities and you'd like for them to really appreciate you, but you don't know the answer, right? I really don't know the answer. And in Zen, you learn to say all kinds of things like you know, do funny things or make up something. And so I was going, maybe he wants me to say because he wants his son to get into medical school at UCLA. Maybe I should say that. I knew I had one chance. Uh, maybe um, he wants me to show the technique where I can knock something off the wall just by sitting here, just by sending an energy bolt over there, you know, telekinesis, which was something that's not that difficult to learn. Uh, maybe he wants me to do this thing, which um, I had learned quite a bit, which is, he said, here, finally we got up to four inch rocks, which I had, that was one of the last things I had to learn, which is to be able to break a four inch rock multiple times, but not with a karate chop, to break it just with energy. Just lightly put your hands on this, and then you move three inches and then the energy goes through. Now, how, do you, how are you able to do that? It's because I thought maybe that's what you wanted to do. Well, because you have to get in the state that there is no reality. There's no solidity. It's what you say it is. 